Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and for the next 25 minutes, Rabbi Schneider will take us on a journey of discovery through the Song of Songs. Most of us have heard the statement that man is not an island unto himself. We all have to live in the company and the comfort of others. But sometimes that's easier said than done. So to help us crack the code, Rabbi Schneider is going to be explaining why sharing your gifts and your talents with the larger community of believers is so important. This message comes from our series, Mysteries of the Song of Songs, and with our message, What God Wants From You, here is Rabbi Schneider. Thank you for joining me in the study of God's Word today. The Song of Songs is so unique in the pages of Scripture. It shows us what we should expect in terms of the stages that we go through in our development, in our relationship with Hashem, with Father God through Yeshua, through King Jesus. I want to jump right back in to the end of the first chapter. As we come to the portion of Scripture that I'm going to be focusing on today, what we have seen develop is this. The Shulamite bride came into a brand new experience with God. Her heart was open. She had an emotional encounter with Him, and it blessed her so completely that she said, I forever want to be with you. I want to make my life about you alone. Draw me to yourself and let us run life together. You are my portion in this world. She was totally engaged in a passionate, fiery love for her bridegroom. Yet as time went on, she found herself feeling disconnected from Him. Oftentimes in our first journey with the Lord, in our early days of walking with God, those days when we first experienced salvation, it felt like God was so close to us. But somehow, for many of us, as time went on, we got to a place where we felt like we ran into a dry spell where we didn't feel as emotionally engaged or connected to the Spirit as we first were when we first came to know Him. And it's at that juncture that we find ourselves in today, where the Shulamite bride, after having this great experience, where she said the king had brought me into his chamber, where her heart was so open to his love, where she experienced him in such a powerful, rich way, she went from that not long afterwards, to calling out to him and saying, where are you? And Jesus spoke to her. And he said, if you do not know most beautiful amongst women, let me tell you. We're in chapter one, verse number eight. And the first thing that he told her was that she needs to be in fellowship with his other children. And so he says, if you yourself did not know most beautiful among women, he says, number one, do this. You want to be close to me? You want to feel more engaged with my spirit. He said, do this, go forth on the trail of the flock. We need to be in fellowship with the rest of God's children. Get in a Bible study. If you're homebound, invite people over to your home to have fellowship with. Pray with people on the phone if you need to. If you have an able body, find a fellowship somewhere to be engaged with. Because the truth is, our relationship with God is not just about Him and us. There's so many people today, it's becoming an epidemic where they say, I'm spiritual. And what they mean by that is their spirituality is just about themselves and God. But what they don't realize is that a lot of their spirituality is not really God, it's just being self-absorbed. Because true spirituality in the kingdom is not meant to be lived alone. You see, the life that we've been called into is life in the kingdom. The kingdom is part of the ministry of the king and his people. In other words, a kingdom involves not just God in one person. It involves God in all his people. This is why the letters of Paul were not written to specific people so much as they were written to bodies of believers, to the church at Ephesus, to the church at Corinth. And it's about a body. One's an arm, one's a leg, Paul says, one's an ear. We all play a different part to serve each other. And so we can't lead the life of the kingdom alone. It just doesn't work because we're called, number one, to receive God's spirit through the lives of the rest of his children. You impart something to me, and then I impart something to you. We're part of a body. So the first thing he tells the Shulamite bride here, listen, you're feeling disconnected. You need to understand to feel my presence all the time, 
You need to be involved with the rest of my people. Get connected to a community. And so I want to challenge you today in whatever way you're able to, depending on your health status, your age, et cetera, whatever way you're able to, seek out a community. If you think you can do it alone, you're going to miss so much of not only what God wants to do in you, but what God wants to do through you. Because he's given each of us a gift, and somehow he wants us to be able to use our gift to be a blessing to somebody else. Listen, people think that to be rich, you have to possess a lot of things. But there's a lot of people that possess a lot of things that are completely bankrupt in their soul. I mean, we could have stories, tell stories of people that were so rich and they lived in multi-million dollar mansions and they spent all their time in their bedroom laying in bed. Or they spent all their time in isolation in their own mansion, totally oppressed, totally afflicted in their mind and soul. Why? Because they were alone. You see, the person that's rich is not the person that possesses everything. The person that's rich is the person that gives the most. Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. The point that I'm making is Jesus said to this woman that wasn't experiencing God at this stage in her journey the way that she wanted to, he gave her a corrective measure to get involved in a community, to get with his flock. And one of the reasons he wanted her there is so that she could give. You see, the person that is rich is the person that gives. God has created us to be a blessing to other people. Think about it. God created you and I not just to accumulate things for ourselves. That is a complete defiled mentality. God created us to give. God so loved the world that he gave. Greater is he that gives than he that receives. And so it's important if you and I are to live a life in the spirit, to feel connected, to feel close to Jesus, is to be part of a community where we can add something. You may not think that what you add is much, but believe me, it is. Just be yourself and just look to give. Just look to be a blessing. That's a real strong point, beloved one. I know it's simple and it may not even seem, you know, that exciting to you, but it's powerful. I mean, we need to connect ourselves to other believers and look for ways to be a blessing. And when we do that, the Spirit of God will flow through us And in addition, we'll also be receiving charge in our life, spiritual charge from those other people that we're connected to. So let's continue on. The first thing he says, go forth in the trail of the flock. Secondly, he says this, which connects to what I just said. He said, and pasture your young goats. This has to do with what I was just speaking about. It has to do with service. And so pastoring is serving. It's taking care of people. Remember Peter? When Peter uh, met Jesus after Jesus had risen from the dead, Jesus said to Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said what to Peter? Well, Peter, if you love me, he said, pastor my people, tend my lambs. And the same is true for you and I today. To walk with Jesus, to walk close with him, to walk arm in arm with him, we have to be serving people. We have to be pastoring people. You might say, well, I'm not a pastor, but let me ask you this. Is there some little one that you can help? She said, tend to my lambs, pastor my little ones. Is there a grandchild you can pastor in the things of the Lord? My wife, Cynthia, that many of you know by television, you know how she came to the Lord? Through her grandmother. Her grandmother told her about Jesus. Her grandmother was her foundation of faith. Her grandmother is long gone. But that simple, childlike way that Cynthia's grandmother shared Jesus with her brought Cynthia a faith and brought her into the kingdom. So I'm saying to you, yes, I know that most of you, you're not standing in the office of a pastor, but is there somebody that you can minister to? Is there somebody that you can encourage? Look for somebody. I promise you, God will give you somebody to minister to, somebody be a blessing to. Jesus said to the Shulamite bride, if you want to feel close to me, you've got to pastor somebody. You've got to serve somebody. I know that some of you think, well, I'm not spiritually mature. I don't know the Bible that well. You know what? 
Do the best you can. God will use you and he'll bless you and you'll be happy for it. And then finally, the third thing he says to her is this. He said, do this, pastor your young goats by the tents of the shepherds. And this simply means this, is that don't just be someone that rebels against all authority. Don't be someone that criticizes all the, you know, there's so many people, they go to church and the first thing they do after the message, you've heard this before, is that, you know, they get in the car and they tear down something about the service, complain about something the pastor said. Beloved, watch your mouth. Mouth. Watch your mouth. I know there's a lot of imperfection in the world. I know there's a lot of imperfection in the church. I know there's a lot of imperfection with our leaders. I know it. It's frustrating. But you know what? It doesn't discount the fact that the Lord still works through authority. Because without authority, everything is chaos. God uses authority to bring order into chaos. So we have to conduct our lives recognizing that God works through the principle of authority. Do it, beloved, under the shepherd of your local community. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus and Rabbi will be right back. Beware, your family is under attack, bombarded with the acceptance of same-sex marriage, gender fluidity taught to our children in school, government-funded drag queen story hours, and the rainbow has been hijacked. When will it end? Enough is enough. Discover the real truth about God's rainbow. It's time to take the rainbow back. Visit takingtherainbowback.com. When you give to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, it allows us to spend more time focusing on what really matters. And for us, that means getting God's word out to as many people as possible. And right now, at this very moment, there is someone who needs to hear Rabbi's practical biblical teaching and your financial gift is what makes that possible. To donate, go online to discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Now to conclude today's message, here's Rabbi Schneider. I love this next section as we go now to chapter number two. Hear the word of God. Now, I know it's confusing to separate which verse is aligning with which speaker because we have two different speakers here. We have the king, who's a shadow of Father God to us through Yeshua, And then we also have the Shulamite bride, who's a shadow of you and I. And the verses don't identify who's speaking here. Is it Father God that's speaking, or is it the Shulamite bride? Is it the church that's speaking? So I'm going to try to make sense of this for you. Let's begin chapter 2, verse 1. The Shulamite bride says, I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. It's interesting in conjunction with this verse. Notice what she said in verse number 12 of chapter number 1. When the king was at his table... My perfume gave forth its fragrance. What does this mean? She knew, beloved, she was beautiful to God. And as she became comfortable and confident with God's love for her, her heart began to open to him and the beauty that was in her began to come out. That's what she experienced here. She said, while the king was at his table, my perfume sprung forth. And then she said, I am the rose. She said, I am the lily of the valley. You're beautiful to the Lord. God wants you to know this about yourself. And you know what? Not only did she say it about herself, but the next thing that happens in the story is Jesus affirms it about her. Notice what Yeshua says back to her. Like a lily among the thorns, so is my darling among the maidens. In other words, he was saying, you are special. You stand out to me. And you too, beloved one, whether you're a man or a woman, you stand out to the Lord. It's hard for us to understand how each one of us is so unique, so special, so different, but we are. And one day, beloved, we're gonna fully know it. I wanna encourage you as much as possible, have confidence in this and walk this way. Oftentimes I see people that physically may not be that attractive, but because of the confidence they have, because they've been loved and have confidence in that love and who that love has identified them to be, their physical appearance is so enhanced, they look like really attractive people. It's the beauty, beloved, of love, of a God confidence. So I want to encourage you, like the Shulamite bride, have God confidence. Listen to what she said about herself. I am the Rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. She wasn't boasting. Jesus said back to her, like a lily among the thorns, so is my darling among the maidens. I want to encourage you, have God confidence. Sometimes, I know this is true of me, 
we're so afraid of thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to. We're so afraid of thinking something good about ourselves because we're afraid it might be prideful that in doing that, sometimes we don't let in the good things that God wants us to let in. Sometimes I'll have good thoughts about myself, but I'll be afraid to let them in because I'll think, Lord, I don't know if that's me or the devil, and I'm afraid that if I'm letting a good thought in about myself that's not from you, that I'm going to end up being in pride, and then you're going to have to end up judging me, correcting me, and disciplining me for it. But the Lord is showing me, no, some of the thoughts that you're thinking about yourself that are good thoughts that you're afraid of the devil are actually thoughts that I want you to receive from me. I want to affirm you, and I want you to agree with my affirmation. Listen to what Jesus said to her once again. She had a thought about herself. I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Then Yeshua affirmed her. So is my darling among the maidens, like a lily among the thorns. So is my darling among the maidens. I want to encourage you and I, beloved. Let's believe the good things about ourselves that Father wants us to believe. Father, help us to be able to discern when we're having thoughts about ourselves that you want us to affirm. Like the Shulamite bride that had a heart that opened up to you when she knew your love for her and she began to speak positively about herself. Help us, Father God, to affirm the good things about ourselves that you want us to affirm. Father, we break off every lie of the enemy. Help us, Father God, to affirm about ourselves. Help us, Father, to agree with you in what you're saying about us. And Father, we ask you to help us separate what is good and pure and true from that which is from the enemy so that we don't find ourselves agreeing with something that's not from you. We don't want to agree with the devil in pride. There's things that you want us to say about ourselves to ourselves in your love but we're afraid that maybe we'll be prideful in doing so. Father, help us to enter in to the fullness of what you have for us. Well, I hope that made sense there. I just want you to understand the God confidence that this Shulamite bride had, you and I need to have God confidence. We need to know we're beautiful. We need to know we're powerful. And so she says, like an apple tree among the trees of the forest, so is my beloved among the young men. In his shade, I took great delight and sat down, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. What I want you to get here is that she's really enjoying the company of God. She said, in his shade, I took great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. She's just enjoying the security of having fathers covering over her life of being affirmed in her love. She's just enjoying God. Have you ever had a time in your life where you're just able to enjoy God? I mean, are you able at times just to put beautiful worship music on and just lay down on a couch and just let yourself just enjoy God? Just enjoy worshiping Him. That's what's going on here. She's just taking joy in a relationship. She says to Him, in His shade, speaking of the Lord, I took great delight and sat down. She's not doing anything, just enjoying. And his fruit was sweet to my taste. He has brought me to his banquet hall, and his banner over me is love. She was confident that she was protected. Notice she said there that as she was being secure in his love, enjoying it, she made the declaration, his banner over me is love. A banner is like a covering. It's like a victory. She knew that she was secure and protected by the love of God. And I want to encourage you today, beloved one, to know that the banner over your life by Hashem, by Father God through His Son Yeshua, there is a banner over your life of love. Jesus said, I am with you always, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I want you to know God has got your back. There's nothing that you need to be afraid of because there's a banner of victory over your life, and that banner is love.
You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus and a message by Rabbi Schneider titled, What God Wants From You. You know, sometimes people seem to have it all together, but we all have fallen short of God's glory. And that's why it's so important to be in communion and fellowship with his other children. It's helpful for us to be around people who understand what we're going through. Or maybe you're listening today and you don't really know know much about who Jesus is and why he died for us. Well, let me invite you to go to our website to discover the Jewish Jesus for yourself. You'll find the answers that you're looking for when you click the link that says find Jesus in the middle of our homepage at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Friends, your decision to accept Jesus as your Savior, it is the first step in a wonderful journey that will ultimately lead you to eternal life in God. And when you make that commitment, we want to hear from you because we've got a couple of resources that we'd like to send you for free as our way of saying, welcome to the family. And now, here is Rabbi once again. The scriptures teach us that no good thing does he withhold from those that love him. Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. As we come to the close of the broadcast today, I want us to ask ourselves, are we adequately loving God with our wealth? I know that many of us have heard messages on this before and as soon as we hear a discussion about finances, we're kind of jaded, it turns us off. But the reality is the scriptures are clear that God's people are called to honor him with the first fruits of their wealth. I just wanna ask you today, beloved one, if God is blessing you through this ministry, would you honor him with your wealth through this ministry? The scripture tells us that when we honor him with our lives, it comes back to us, pressed down, good measure, running over into our lives. Let's trust him, let's honor him and let's love him. I want to thank you in advance for your love and for your gifts. God's richest blessing on your life. I love you and shalom. If the Lord is leading you to support this ministry with a gift of any amount, we'd like to invite you to go online and give at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. To give a donation by phone, just give us a call at 800-777-7835. Or you can also text your donation to us when you type the keyword rabbi to the number 45777. As a token of our appreciation for your financial donations, we'll send you Rabbi Schneider's message of the month that's available as a download. And we'll also send you a copy of our latest newsletter. It's filled with so much great content, like details about Rabbi's latest book, Entering His Presence. You'll journey into the river of God's Word in this 100-day devotional, and it's bound to have you feeling refreshed and renewed. Rabbi's powerful teaching in this book will offer you the keys to entering into an authentic relationship with Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, and you can purchase it online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Now to wrap up today's message with a special blessing, here is Rabbi Schneider. What I love about the ironic blessing is that it did not originate with man. The words actually proceeded from the very essence of God himself. The blessing comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. So listen to these words and receive the blessing of the Lord into your life today. Yahweh, 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance And the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. 
God bless you, and shalom. I'm Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Be sure to join us again tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider explains why you were made to experience God. That's coming up Friday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.